Hello everybody and welcome back to the Lost Planeswalker. You are here with me, Jesse, the Lost Planeswalker, and today I am very excited to be able to let you know what you need to know before you buy Duskmorn House of Horrors. This modern horror based set is somewhat similar to things we've seen before but entirely new altogether. If you are new to my channel or haven't been watching my videos this week, you'll know I have gone in depth about the lore and geography of Duskmorn, what creatures you can expect to find in this plane, the return of Arch Enemy and how this is going to be retooled for Commander, the Commander decks and what themes and play styles each of them have, and lastly I've been doing story summaries that take the chapters down to just a few minutes for your enjoyment. In this video, I'll be talking briefly about all these topics and more, but let's start out by looking at what kind of products you can expect to see from this set. Like all recent Magic the Gathering sets, we have the main set, commander exclusive cards, and special guest slots returning, reprinting some older cards with some fun new themes to them. You will have play boosters, collector boosters, four commander decks, a bundle box, and a pre-release kit with a special nightmare bundle. And the last main set of the year always comes out with a holiday bundle, so that's this one for this set. This set will also feature over six different art treatments, which is insane, with the full art manor lands, a double exposure, and a textured double exposure cards, paranormal frames that really bring out that 80s ghost hunting tech, mirror monsters that look like they're coming straight out of the mirrors right at you, and a special Japan showcase where they will feature the first ever fractured foiling technique. Diving into the Maset mechanics we can expect in Duskmorn, we have two so far with Delirium, a Magic the Gathering favorite. Delirium encourages players to fill their decks with lots of different card types or cards with multiple types. And this brings up a major point because returning in the set are enchantment creatures. These will be a big theme in the set and will allow for some very fun play. The second set mechanic we know so far and is brand new is called Impending. This is an ability that lets you play a creature as an enchantment in removing time counters until they hit the battlefield as creatures themselves. I like to think of them similarly to the Theros gods. You cast them at a little bit of reduced rate and until you hit that certain requirement, which in this case are the time counters, they just remain as enchantments. Now, let's give a little brief history of the lore and geography of Justmorn, just to see what's going on. So, the big bad, the ruler of this plane, Valgavoth, who is the linchpin demon of this world, and decided that instead of being trapped in a prison of this one house, he used his power to expand that prison to an entire plane, folding and consuming as much of the world around him into the house itself. So there is nothing else but the house. Valgavoth can controls the house and is actually given it semi-sentience that allows him and the house to shift the rooms and monsters at will. Valgavoth goes through two special phases called Quiescence and Harrowing. Quiescence is when Volgoroth's power is at its lowest point as he's going through the process of his molt. Harrowing, on the other hand, is right after his molt is completed and this is when he's at his greatest power, sending surges of malevolent force throughout the entire house and to all of the creatures inside of it. The survivors of this house do their best to stay alive, but they are met with many challenges everywhere they go. The five major zones or rooms in this house are the mist moors, the flood pits, the Balmerk, the boiler bridges, and the haunt woods. Each of these areas have some challenges that make them very hard to survive in. All these spaces are susceptible to the power of the house in Valgavoth and can move around, making the room that you just exited not the same room you return to going back through a doorway. The only room in the house that doesn't change is the below, which is the original basement of the house in the lair of Valgavoth. It is rumored that this is the only true way to exit the house, but no one who has ever ventured down there has ever returned to tell the tale. Talking about venturing through the house, we have the creatures that inhabit Duskmorn. They are just as demented and twisted as Valgavoth their self. Now, before we dive into those, I would just like to say, please consider leaving a like and subscribing. It would mean the world to me. But now let's dive right back into those monsters with a very special property that Duskmorn has, which is the ability to manifest monsters into being. Nightmares are creatures formed from the survivor's nightmares. They hunt down their hosts and try to trap them in an endless cycle of terror and fear feeding Valgavoth. Cellar spawn are actually the demented and twisted daydreams of Valgavoth, who are never truly alive and in that point can't actually be killed either. And lastly, we have the glimmers that embody the survivor's hopes and dreams and provide some amount of safety for those survivors in the house. Moving now to the groups of the house, we start with the cult of Vagavoth, who tries to lure you in with kindness and safety before trying to feed your fears straight to Valgavoth himself. Glitch ghosts are the embodiment of people who have died during the period before the house took over the entire plane called the Ascension. And these ghosts have found their way back into the house by squeezing through cracks in its impenetrable surface 
and because of that have become distorted by the house's malevolent energy. Razorkin might be one of the most brutal of all the groups, as they, like Valgavoth, live to strike fear and terror. These people were once survivors who have been mentally twisted to a newer evil one. Like everything in this house, just because it looks cute doesn't mean it won't kill you, and that's true for the Quicken toys as well. These seemingly harmless inanimate objects want to be picked up people passing through these different rooms, and they wait patiently before they strike, picking off the group one at a time. One of the other unique races to this world are the Wicker People. These Wicker People used to be humans as well during the time of the Ascension, before a ritual gone bad has now spawned an even greater threat than the one they thought they were leaving. And of course, you can't forget about the demons of this plane, who've actually been through a pretty hard time, as Valgavoth sees them as the only true threats to his power, and has killed or crippled the remaining ones, so that their power may never challenge him. But not everything in this house wants to kill the survivors, though. We have Beasties, who are big fluffy monsters who will actually protect their survivors for their love and affection. These gentle beasts really don't mean any harm unless they end up seeing what's underneath their masks. In the last, I wouldn't say friendly, but I wouldn't say harmful mob is gremlins. Ones I'm very excited to see. These little guys just like to mess with people. In doing so may put those survivors or evil doers in a tricky situation. So I'm interested to see how this plays out. But the final group in the house, of course, is the survivors. And boy, do they do their best to try not being killed by this crazy house. The two main factions of the survivors are the House Institute and the Door Blades. These two groups work together by examining the monsters of this world, giving that information to the Door Blades, who then bring back more monsters to be studied. Shifting over from that, I want to start talking about the commander decks and the very special arch enemy cards you can find in each of these decks. This set will feature four commander decks with an Esper Miracle Workers deck, a Golgari Death Troll deck, a Simic Jump Scare deck, and lastly, a Rakdos Endless Punishment deck. And looking from the box art, we have the main commanders for the Miracle Workers being Amanatu, who of course, I believe we've only ever received as a commander deck in the past, so I'm very excited to see this. Winter, a survivor we learn about in the story and will be the head commander for the Death Troll deck. Zimone as the jump scare commander. And lastly, my guess is Valgavoth as the face commander for Endless Punishment. We have not seen a picture of Valgavoth at the time of recording, so this is just my guess, but I think I'm pretty accurate. Each of these decks will also contain a special 10 card pack of Arch Enemy, a sub game format that has been around for 14 years now as it first came out in 2010. Each deck will be equipped with these 10 cards that are unique to each deck and will let anyone play as the arch enemy if they have them. You can mix these cards from each of the four decks into one larger deck and even add in some of those cards from the previous arch enemy sets. Just be aware though, we do have a few changes to how Arch Enemy works, and that could make a few older cards too weak or too strong. Just like Arch Enemy of the past, you reveal the top card of the Arch Enemy deck and do whatever the scheme says during the Saga step, right after you enter your first main phase. The villain or Arch Enemy will take their turn, and then each of the heroes will take a shared turn, passing through all of the phases at the same time. So each hero will do their upkeep, untap and draw, move through first main phase, combat, second main, and end step together. Now that's all standard if you've never played Arch Enemy before, and one of the things that they're changing, focusing this around commander instead, are the life totals. Before, the Arch Enemy had 40 health, and each of the players had 20 health individually. Because of how commander games can run, Having 20 life in Commander really isn't that much, and one big swing could knock you out very early on in the game. You could then just be sitting around for a half an hour or even an hour if it's just taken that long to finish the game, and that's really not that fun. So to try and solve this, they adjusted the life totals so the villain has 60 health, and the heroes have a combined 60 health, meaning you all win or lose together, which I think honestly makes more sense. I have personally only ever played Arch Enemy once, but it was a blast, and I'm really looking forward to getting my hands on some of these cards. And lastly, of course, is the story of Duskmorn. And if you want to find more or check it out, I'll leave links to it in the description below, but I'm basically summarizing that story down to just a couple minutes so that you can quickly learn what's going on in Duskmorn without having to get into the nitty gritty. But if you enjoy that, you know, check out Magic's website because they have the full stories there as well. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you've enjoyed this video and it has filled you in on everything to expect from this set. 
I've done more in-depth videos covering all of the topics we talked about today. So if you're really interested in any of that, look in the description. But I am very excited and I hope you'll stick around and watch all of the spoiler vi videos I'll be doing for this set. The first one starts August 31st and I'll help you tune in and see my video. So I hope you've enjoyed. It would really mean a lot to me if you leave a comment down below telling me what you're most excited about. Is it the Commander decks? Is it Arch Enemy? Have you been reading the story? You know, let me know in the comments down below. In addition, if you would please leave a like, share this video with a friend, and subscribe, that would mean the world to me. So thank you, thank you, thank you. Now today's Scryfall card of the day is Stargaze. Some bat folk dedicate their lives to seeing the world beyond them. Orion, Scholar of the Cosmos. Thank you so much for watching, and as always, I'll see you later, Planeswalkers.